Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 16th, 2021 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Got another guest diary today from Yi Jing Talk, uh, who is writing about uh, shape limiters and buffer float. Now, typically when we think about firewalls, we think about them as security devices, but of course, they also play an important role when it comes to network performance. And that is really what uh, the diary is about, how to optimize the performance of uh, your firewall. Example used here is PFSense, of course, the popular open source uh, firewall, and it does have quite a few of uh, tweaks that you can apply to traffic prioritization. Now, buffer bloat comes up if you have more traffic than your internet provider is able to accept. So you're trying to send traffic faster than it is actually being forwarded by your firewall. And then the trick becomes, how are you prioritizing traffic? By default, what often happens is that one connection can sort of uh, dominate uh, the bandwidth and other connections are either dropped or become pretty much unused usable. With traffic shapers, you're then able to essentially make sure that other connections are getting some time as well, which may lead to a lower peak bandwidth that you have available, but overall to a better user experience by not having other connections time out. And Apple is apparently tweaking some of the privacy issues around access to Google's safe browsing system. Most browsers by default before you visit a website will check with Google if this website is malicious. Now to do so, a hash of uh, the URL or at least a prefix of the URL is uh, being sent uh, to Google. And if that hash shows up in Google's database of malicious websites, then you'll see that famous usually red warning page. But of course, the side effect is that Google will learn what websites, at least malicious websites, you are visiting. For benign websites that are not in Google's index, it's of course then up to how good this hash will actually protect the information. What Apple announced it will be doing now in future versions of iOS at least is to proxy these requests. So Apple will still know what hashes you sent, but of course Apple doesn't necessarily have the database of hashes that Google has and then information is forwarded to Google. The end effect is that Apple doesn't know what websites you looked up. Google doesn't know where the IP address came from. So that information is now disassociated from each other and that's how Apple hopes to improve privacy. You can of course always turn off this feature in your browser if you're more worried about Apple or Google having that information versus falling for a malicious website. And today, some record low temperatures in the US uh, led to fairly widespread uh, power outages, in particular in Texas, uh, where of course, uh, low temperatures like this are less common. The result is a number of outages also of internet service. The down detector does show a spike for AT&T and T-Mobile. Also, of course, energy providers, most notable Centerpoint, energy which is uh, highly affected by this rash of power outages. Haya, a company that makes solution around caller ID and uh, caller identification has published some interesting and uh, Well, uh, surprising to me, at least numbers around scam calls. According to their surveys, 40% of consumers lost some money last year due to scam calls. 7% of uh, consumers lost more than $500. So many of these calls, of course, are these 
tech support calls and the like. Uh, also, tax uh, calls are quite a common uh, theme here. And apparently, and uh, that's, I think, uh, the surprise here, there's a good number of users that actually fall for these calls. So while I don't totally uh, trust this particular uh, survey, uh, it would be interesting uh, to hear uh, if anybody experienced a successful scam, maybe in the family, maybe uh, yourself uh, got scammed here, and uh, what kind of scam or what part of the scam actually made it so convincing. Related to this, Sophos also has a story about a fairly well done tax refund scam that apparently is targeting users in the UK and in particular via SMS messages. So thanks again for listening. And one reader was asking if we're still doing the Raspberry Pi giveaway uh, this month. And yep, uh, I'll still do it. Actually, uh, sort of going to merge uh, the two entry methods that I had sort of in the past. Uh, first of all, we do have that quick survey on the podcast uh, show notes page. That survey only accepts a certain number of uh, submissions uh, per month. So you have to be a little bit quick uh, to participate there. The second second way how you can enter uh, this raffle for a Raspberry Pi is just if you find any inaccuracy or so that I'm reporting, well, uh, just uh, let me know. Uh, best way usually is via the Internet Storm Center's uh, contact form. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.